Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing my own Farkle back here. Um, I know there's a nice light you can buy with chrome top and everything. Kind of expensive. Uh, but it showed out of stock. Uh, I forget what the website is. but um, So I decided to look for my own strips. Now I bought these at AutoZone. And if you'll notice, there's a cut. It tells you where you can cut them yourself. Shows you where you can cut them yourself. And I've already trimmed them off. They were 24 inches, and I trimmed it the first cut. So I'm going to figure out how to put these on properly, bury the wire. I'm probably going to drill a hole and bury the wire. And um, let me just give you a test on how bright these are. All right. These are going to be my extra brake lights. And it's raw right now. I'm just showing. Uh, I decided I'm going to show a video on how to do the stuff that I'm going to do myself uh, and save money. These were 19 bucks at AutoZone. Uh, yeah, it's got white and stuff in it. Uh, however, my wife, it, when I held it up, I said, "Well, what do you think about that white and LEDs and everything? And you know, does that look bad?" And she thought it looked kind of cool. It kind of matches my black. I don't know about your spider, but. Uh, in the end, what I'm going to do is, since I trimmed them and got them to fit, uh, I could put one, right? But two is definitely brighter, so I'm going to double stack them. Uh, they came this way. They come with a stupid little test button and an iCAD pack, but they're 12 volt. So no resistors, no other kind of crap. And then what I'm going to do is, I figured out, just like on my Farkle for my mirrors, I figured out how to trim this and uh, hide the, get the wire to be right behind uh, the rubber insulator. All right, so what I'm probably going to do is drill a little hole. Actually, my wire is going to go over here. Uh, so let me explain why. You've got the air shock over here and everything, and I don't want the wires getting tangled in that. So when I drill that hole and run this back down through, I'm going to find a way to do it uh, properly down to the brake lights and tap in. Anyway, so uh, just a little experiment here on doing my own. A uh, high brake light. No offense to the sellers selling the lights that goes down here with the amber and everything and the turn signals. Too low for me. I want something high. The whole purpose of having a brake light up high is so that it separates you from down here. <coughs> Pardon me. And gives you some distance. All right. <clears throat> so I want it up here. I really, really do. So, and the what I've seen online and what's available just didn't cut it for me. So I'm going to do my own Farkle here. And I know it looks like a wiring mess right now. I'm in the raw stage, planning stage. So what I'm probably going to do is right where this wire is going to go in, and I'm going to trim all this, I'm going to drill a hole right in the corner, all right? And I'm going to show you guys how to seal this from water. And then later, if you ever want to remove this, since it's double-sided tape, I will show you how to fill these and make them look like it didn't happen. All right. Well, that's my plan anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own uh, brake light stuff for 19 bucks. All right. A little more work than some of you guys might want to do, but uh, I'm gonna document everything and show you how to do it. Anyway, first step, planning. We'll talk to you later. Hey spider lovers, so I said I'd show uh, all the procedures I'm doing to get the uh, my own Farkle brake light mounted up here. Alright, so I've removed this panel and that's pretty simple. You pop your trunk open and inside there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws. You take those out and uh, your uh, Tupperware comes off the trunk. Alright, so then we also want to be able to run a wire down uh, and get at the brake lights and tap into them. So, uh, starting to look to see what else needs to be removed, and I needed to remove this panel here, and that is two screws here, one, two, three, four here, and then uh, open the other side bag, and there's uh, the same two screws just like on the other side. And this panel right here came off pretty darn easy. All right, so that's off. So then I thought, okay, do I need to take anything more at to get at the brake lights? So I can see the harness is right here. It's an orange, white wire, but you can't really pull it out to get at it, all right? 
And same thing on the other side. This one's a little more accessible, but again, there's like no slack on it to get it out here or to try to tap in. All right, so it appears we need to remove this vinyl cover here, which uh, I will do next, and I will show you exactly what screws to remove to get at that, and then we'll get at the brake light wires. All right, stay tuned, more to come. Okay, so that was pretty simple too. There were two screws, one here, one here. They're long screws, two screws here, long screws. Now pay attention to the screws and how you take them off and keep them separated. The three screws back here were shorties, all right? So keep track of that. You want to put it back in the right place. All right, so this should just pull right off now. Maybe not. Might be some other screws under here. Yep, there's one back here in the corner. So we'll need to get at that with a... Uh, a wrench and a Torx on the socket wrench. All right, there's probably going to be one back here too. All right, so that should get this panel off so we can get at the brake lights. We'll take a look as we dig in. Okay, so the next step is we need to find the wires to tap in. So I've turned the key on so that way the writing lights are on. Now we know this in the light unit is the uh, this is the brake slash writing light. As you can see, the writing light is on. I've got this one removed, obviously, and we see there's three wires going to this. We know the writing light's going to be one color. We know the brake light will be the other color, and then we know one of them's ground. My bed is black is going to be ground, just like when I did the Farco on my side mirrors. One of these is writing, and one of these is brake. So what I've done is I've hooked up a little voltmeter, and a way to get uh, probes into the connector is just use a paper clip. Now I stuck this into the orange wire to see if I'm getting voltage because the riding lights are on. So I'm just going to touch the ground here. And as you see, when I do that, the meter's reading 12.6 uh, volts. So that must be the riding because I bet if I hook this to the white wire, I won't get anything unless I tap the brake pedal. So we're going to try that just to make sure. Okay, so a little bit of trickery here. Now I've got the paper clip in the white wire. I've got the probe touching ground. You can see my meter's zero volt. So I'm going to reach up. Okay, just to show you a little trick I'm going to do with this light strip to try to conceal this wire as best as possible. Now, what they've done on this is they've applied some epoxy or some kind of glue inside to keep the wires from pulling out and then they heat shrunk it. So really, I mean, if you were to just bend this over, you're still going to see the wire. I want to improve on that. So what I found while doing uh, uh, messing around is all you need to do is trim a little notch in the ins in this heat shrink tubing, remove it, and you'll be able to then fold this wire over right at the end of the heat shrink. Now, while holding this back, what we're going to do, I'm going to take a trusty lighter out. I'm going to reheat the heat, the tip of this heat shrink tubing, get it hot enough, and then kind of mold it over. All right, and of course you can trim it up a little bit, clean it up a little bit, and that'll make like a nice end there. That, uh, by the way, there's a little bit of glue right there, so we'll just pop that out so I can bend this over a little better. All right, I'll reheat, and just kind of work at it get that cleaned up. So now when we mount this, as you see, the wire will not be seen at all. All right, it'll come straight out the back where I'm going to drill the hole in the cover. All right, so that's pretty slick there, way to clean up so you're not seeing a wire uh, sticking out. All right, so do that to both of them if you're going to mount it, and we'll continue on and uh, with the next step, and that's getting them on the trunk lid. Okay, the next step is to do some planning here and decide uh, where we want to mount these. Now one of the problems is the top of this lid is curved and these things, if you want to try to follow that curve in the lid, it's not going to work. Uh, they don't like to twist that way and they won't stick well that way. So in order to keep them straight, we're not going to be using the curve. What you want to do is get both, if you're going to use two, you want to get them both lined up, make sure that they're going to lay flat, all right, and then you're going to once you get them perfect, you're going to mark where you're going to drill the holes for the wires to go. All right, I want to be as close to this radius as possible. Um, and so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this lined up the way I think it should be. And I'm going to mark and drill those holes. And we'll come back and take a look. 
Okay, and there we have it, as you see. We uh, did the trick to fold the wire under the rubbers. No wires are showing. Okay, try to get them lined up as straight as possible. Um, you're going to be at the bottom of the curve here uh, so that you can keep them straight and have the ends about the same distance from top and bottom as this end here so it just it doesn't look crooked or anything. All right, so there we go. There's my light strips on. Now what you want to do is I trim these wires short and then I, I've got to solder them and join them together. The stock wires that came with these lights are not going to be long enough to reach all the way down through the trunk and into to, and tap onto the brake light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice these together, uh, leaving some slack here. So you know if I need to peel them off or whatever, I have some room to just cut a wire and take them off, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then what you're going to want to do is take some RTV and fill these holes so no, there's no possibility of water leaking inside this because once this is bolted back on. It, that cover kind of seals it and you don't want water building up in that inner cover all right so for sure seal those off with uh, RTV or some kind of sealant all right so I'm gonna go ahead and splice these and put a wire on I'm not gonna show a video of that if you don't know how to solder wires just the only tip is white stri stripe to white stripe those are your positive lines get them together and put on a long enough wire that we can reach to the brake lights and when we get back when I get back I'll show you where to tap into the brake lights and wire it up Okay, another tip, guys, is uh, where the wires are exiting, I've put a tie wrap, I fed the wire under here, and put a tie wrap on here as to give a strain relief so that we don't yank the wires at the LED bars. So I left a little service loop in there. Uh, you can tuck it where you want or whatever. But uh, So before you bolt that on, I suggest putting a tie wrap on there, give you a little bit of strain relief so you're not yanking on the wires and your seal that you put here to keep water out. All right? Okay, so we got the cover back on, and we got the wire feeding in the back side here and out this hole. As you can see, there's the wire. All right, I've also removed this. So, you know, there's three screws here on the inside and two on the outside. It was pretty easy to snap off, but this allowed me to see where to run the wire. As you can see, this is going to mesh with this corner, so you don't want to pinch it in there, so you wind up cutting it off. So I think the best way is just kind of snake it around and then when you go to snap this on make sure you're not pinching anything okay anyway we got the run all the way down then I ran it through an existing tie wrap uh, with other wires heading down there so that's probably a good idea there we know that it shouldn't pinch anything because other wires are there but uh, that's my run and I'm gonna put this back on we'll come back and finish hooking it to the tail light Next step is we want to tap into the wires. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can get uh, the expensive connectors. I buy these automotive connectors. You can get them at, uh, at uh, any auto store. And what they do is when you, st you stick the wire you want to tap into into this first hole, and then the wire you're adding goes in the second hole. You see there's a stop on the back where the wire can't come through. don't know if you can see that. Now, once you get the wires in place, you just with a pair of pliers crimp this metal thing down and it splices into both wires now even though I have a different gauge here than there they're pretty close and this supports this particular one supports uh, pardon me here supports 18 to 22 gauge you don't want to go too small on this if it's the wrong gauge because it may just cut the wire in half when you crimp that metal thing down so you want to make sure you get the right size I'm using the 18 to 22 gauge and we're gonna go ahead and we're on the black wire I've uh, when I soldered this single wire to my lights I used uh, the black wire and the white wire as positive and we know we'll be hooking that to the white wire over here so we're just gonna crimp those things on there and then we'll test the lights out okay we're all tapped in looking good leaving some uh, loose wire here um, so we can move the connector around now you could have come I probably should have come in through the back but uh, it really doesn't matter uh, these are removable if you ever need to Difficult, but removable. Don't forget to snap the the latch so that they stay closed, that little plastic flap you saw on there. Now, some people might say, hey, look, Bob, all the connectors on this bike have this waterproof seal when you plug them in. These aren't waterproof. I'll be honest with you, up in here, I'll tell you what, I'll let you know if I have any issues, but since they just cut through the insulation a little bit and tap into the wire, I don't think we're going to have a problem, but if you're concerned about it, get some better uh, tap-ins uh, to do that, just my opinion. I went cheap, okay? <laughs> As I said, 20 bucks. 19.95 for the lights, 
uh, a little bit of wire, and uh, I think I paid two, three bucks, two and a half bucks for those two uh, taps. Okay. Anyway, so check this out, guys. We got the key on. All right. There's my brake light, and we hit the brake pedal, and bingo. As you see, I now have a top-mounted brake light for twenty bucks. All right, guys. So I showed you how to take all the paneling off. I'm not going to really show how to put it all back on. Uh, just reverse the process, but uh, there's my Farkle, and I'm sticking with it. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to everyone who wants to add their own rear brake light at the top of their RT. Enjoy. All right, guys, got everything buttoned back up. Took no time at all. A uh, couple of pointers. A, there were four screws with washers. They hold this panel on under the, uh, the two uh, trunks. Uh, there were shorty screws I talked about before. Another thing is don't put a screw in and tighten it up. Get the panel on there and put all the screws in, leave them loose. This allows you to adjust the panel so you got a nice even gap, things like that. There are some play in the panels you can mess with. Anyway, I wanted to show my Farkle, so as you see, no wires. Right, looks pretty good. Straight on, so let's watch. I got a rope tied to the brake pedal here. Let's see if I can do this so I can show you what the rear top brake light looks like. As you see, plenty bright, lights up that whole top. So another safety farkle for 20 bucks, eh, actually with tax and a couple other things, maybe 25. But there you go, nice easy way to do it. Worked great for me, to me it looks great too. Anyway, I know I said so long before, hope this video series was helpful to you. Enjoy and uh, give me any feedback you like.